The original Forester was first introduced back in 1995, and sales began shortly after in 1997 around Japan and US, making it one of the first crossover SUVs to ever be manufactured. And now, Subaru has given it its e-boxer technology in the hopes of bringing it an extra spark. Not much has changed when it comes to the design of this facelifted fifth generation model. However, I do like the shape of these front LED headlights that come integrated with daytime running lights that pull your attention towards this front grille. That has been slightly increased in size and where you can find the Subaru badge. At the side, you can spot these prominent creases that start on the front wheel arch and make their way towards the back. And since we are talking about wheels, as standard with XC trims, you get 17 inch alloy wheels. As standard, you get automatically folding and heated door mirrors. Subaru really wants to emphasize that the Forester isn't your typical just an SUV SUV. This is an off-road SUV SUV. Therefore, as standard, again, you get roof rails across all trims. The rear end adopts the no-nonsense approach that Subaru has been known for years. However, although simple, I do like the design of these rear tail lights, and you also get a lovely spoiler. Also, across all trims, you get a rear view camera, as standard so that you can navigate into those tight parking spaces. Sadly, due to the batteries that are placed underneath the boot floor, once opened, you only get around 509 liters of boot capacity. And considering the off-road nature of the Forester, there's no surprise that you can find lots of hooks and anchor points dotted around the boots here. And you also get a 12 volt socket in here. And there's also plenty of space underneath the boot floor. If you need to extend that space, you can always fold the seats that you can do via pulling these tabs here, one over there and one over there, or you can press these buttons and the seats will fly down in a 60-40 arrangement. Once folded, you get 1,730 litres of extended boot capacity, and although sadly you can't fold them in a 40-20-40 arrangement, you also get your roof rails and you got a brake towing capacity of 1,830 kilograms. So the e-boxer lineup only comes shipped with one engine option, which comprises a two liter petrol engine, a small electric motor, which is fed by a small lithium ion battery. The system produces 148 horsepower and 194 newton meters of torque for a zero to 62 time of 11.8 eight seconds so it's not the fastest of the blog but how does that translate to what you're experiencing you can definitely feel that when pulling out of junctions and off of roundabouts it, it doesn't feel as quick as the block um, in its standard mode however once you put it in sport mode it does make a massive difference and um, it's suddenly a lot more responsive so I would I would definitely recommend driving it in sport mode Subaru has placed the engine symmetrically and quite low in the chassis in the hopes of helping with driving stability. So is that something that you notice or not really? Yeah, definitely. So it grips to the road really well. It takes corners really well. The steering is quite heavy, um, but that does fill you with confidence. It makes it feel really sturdy as you're driving around. So as expected, Subaru installed quite a rigid suspension here, obviously to make sure that it could handle all kinds of terrains but do you feel that that rigidity impacts the car on normal roads like this one and going over speed bumps like we are now? No, I think it's actually all right. It's fine, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's actually fine. I was expecting it to be a little bit more solid, like... A bit more severe. Yeah, but not at all. It actually it's actually out, smooth them out, yeah, really nicely. So what are your thoughts on noise and vibration? I'd say that the noise levels are okay. So wind noise, you can't really hear. Um, you can hear a bit of a vibration. So as you're going over lumps and bumps in the road, you can hear the vibration. Um, and there's, there's almost a bit of a rattling throughout the cabin. So I'm not sure about you, but one of the things that I've noticed straight away when we sat in the car was the amount of screens you have. So you've got your screen behind your wheel, you've got your infotainment screen, and you've got that screen on top of the dashboard. Um, how are you finding all this information bombarded at you at all the time? For some people, having all this information readily available shown on the screens is probably a really good thing. Um, but for somebody like me, I'm not too fussed about it. It just looks like a lot of numbers and a lot of information that I don't really need to know when I'm driving from A to B. So we've mentioned when we first hopped in the Forester that you currently drive the ID3, which is a smaller, more compact family car. Do you find that 
with this higher driving position you have a better view of what's ahead of you yeah you you can see a lot more you're a lot higher up and um, so you've got really good visibility of the road ahead you've also got really thin pillars so it doesn't obstruct your view what about that back window because it, it looks massive from here it is you've got really great view through the back window and also the back windows are really large as well so you can see everything you can do out of those two so i'd say all around the visibility in the forester is pretty good so a standard with all forester trims you do get a rear view camera but you also get a side view camera which is displayed in the multi-information screen up there do you think that they are both useful or would you not worry so much about the top one so the side view camera at the top I don't feel of great benefit and for me I can only look at one camera at a time so I focus on the rear view camera so as I'm reversing into the space I'm using the lines to line it up with the space and see where I'm actually steering so for me that that camera isn't all that useful um, but that could be because I'm not used to using a camera like that I don't have that in my vehicle so I'm only used to the rear view camera so I would focus mainly on that so the first thing you'll notice as soon as you hop into Forrester's front cabin is that even though Subaru went for that no-nonsense approach you still have a lot of material variety here at six foot I'm about four inches of the top of the roof lining there and even though Subaru has marketed the Forrester as this off-road SUV there's still plenty of comfort available to you Seats are heated and electrically adjustable as standard, so you can move yourself in a number of different ways. Behind the wheel, you get a little LCD display that shows you basic driving information, such as your current speed, driving mode, consumption, and mileage. But as we mentioned in the driving section, you do have now two screens here, and that's our main infotainment display, and you get your 6.3 inch multi-information display. Underneath the display, you do get a little cubby for your phone, which fits my iPhone 13 perfectly. However, considering the size of smartphones nowadays, I don't think you could fit many down there. But you do get an auxiliary port, two USB-A ports, and you also get a 12 volt socket. When it comes to cubby holes in the front here, you've got these two cup holders, which are perfect for one of these smaller flasks. However, you can see it's uh, not the most secure fit. If you open the armrests, you have a little tray for your coins, and it, oh, it does go quite far. Look, if I put my iPad in there, done. And you can also charge it because you also get another 12 volt socket in there. In the back, you'll find the same amount of material quality and variety. In terms of space, I've got plenty of leg room. Headroom, you probably won't see it, but I've got about four inches above my head. So space isn't too bad. And if you were to put about three people in a bag here, I mean, the middle person wouldn't be very comfortable because of the, the central tunnel there. But for short journeys, it's basically what you need. But overall, I do think that the Forester is a great package. And if you are ready to go for your options with one of our vehicle specialists, then do feel free to give us a call on 01903 538 835. Alternatively, you can always visit our website and browse the latest offers we've got on the Forrester family. But that's everything from me today. If you enjoyed this review, do give it a like, subscribe to our channel to be part of this amazing community. And if you are interested in car content, do click that notification bell because it will notify you when our next review comes out. But that was all. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.